Hi there and welcome again to this Making in Woodwork for You session on joints. My name is Graham Mansfield and I'm with Microconcepts. So if you tuned in today and thought you were going to be looking at the anatomy of joints, rotational, knuckle, saddle, hinge, ball and socket joints, then I'm afraid you've picked the wrong session. Today's session is specifically about joints used for wood furniture design. So we're going to specifically look at mortise and tenon, finger joints, dovetail joints, talk about modern joints so anything adding material in the form of dowels biscuits dominoes mini fixes for example so a lot of different joint styles there the three construction techniques we're going to look at today specifically is the biscuit joint and that will be in collaboration with the kitchen unit carcass we then have the domino joint which is in the traditional bathroom cabinet design we have here typically utilizing solid timbers and a example of an oak dower uh, furniture unit in oak using a typical mortise and tenon with the facility to have a cross dowel pin joint that's placed in the joint at the same time. So three nice little examples there that should give you a really good overview of what's potentially possible with the woodwork for inventor add-on. Joints in a little bit more detail for those that are unfamiliar and are new to this sort of technology. We have biscuit joints, traditionally slot cut into the timber. And in the example I'm gonna show, we've already included some pilot drilling to allow for the cross drill um, and countersink screw position uh, to glue it together and to joint it and finish it off with a screw joint. And then you've also got the domino joint, stronger joint style there, again, um, similar to the mortise and tenon in its shape. The difference being here it's a the domino is a separate part whereas the mortise and tenon tends to uh, join itself to the uh, to the timber. So those are the three areas that we're gonna we're gonna look at. I'm not going to cover off modeling the uh, the joints but I am going to cover off just a few heads up points on creating the joint. So if you want to tackle this yourself then you've got to create and model your joint which you may already have and you need to define what you what material you're going to add and what material you're going to take away so if you're going to add the material to your assembly component here you're going to need to put the positive sign in if you want to subtract the material you're going to use this negative sign and in essence you can then predefine the assembly of it by using inventors iMates so iMates are just inventors way of predefining preset way of, of assembly constraints. Fantastic thing is you can name them and should you use the attach tool in Woodwork for Inventor then it will pick up and recognize those names and allow you to quickly assemble your component tree directly in your assembly. And it doesn't matter whether you're predefining it for a hinge or a handle or a slide, uh, it's exactly the same and we're just using the same technology uh, to put in for these hinges. So in the first example, we talked about biscuit joints. So I have a simple carcass, simple couple of vertical panels, a couple of stretches on the top and a base panel there. And we're just gonna simply glue, we're gonna glue and screw the uh, construction together. So the joint itself, although it's just a bis biscuit slot, could include the whole information as well. So the first option I've got is a selection of I've got three biscuits as an eye part and an eye part is just a way of if you like pre-configuring the, um, the the component so you can then make some changes and I've actually pre-configured the spacing between the biscuits themselves which can be a, dynamically changed if you wish to uh, make those adjustments but all I'm doing here is simply selecting the work plane geometry I put the long axis in and the short axis and it places and attaches both on the left hand side and the right hand side of the, cor the carcass those biscuits. We've got a couple of other types here. I've got type two is the biscuit, a single biscuit to apply on the stretcher at the top here. It's got a couple of pilot holes already predefined to, to place on as well. So you'll notice as I select the face and I hover over, it just takes a, a small moment to, to kick in. There's a little delay there. You can then align the actual face of the the biscuit and we simply then select the two vertical 
short axis there and we've now put another four biscuits in the top section so literally a couple of minutes is all it takes just to drop those in and we can simply sculpt away and we now have the material removed and the biscuits will be quantified in the bills of materials as well so you can see we've already got the pilot hole information in there so it's drilled the side panel and the end of the stretcher to a set distance that you can determine and, and it's pretty much job done. So that's one kind of concept I wanted to share with you. The next concept would be to move into the bathroom cabinet example. So the cabinet example here has already been pretty much almost finished. We've got some mini fixes that are already been installed with some dowels as well. That's predominantly the um, most of the manufacturing side of things of how things are, are, are assembled in here. However, the two side panels are technically little sub-assemblies, so those styles there that come across need to be jointed to match up with the verticals, and I'm going to use a domino to do that. So this approach is where, again, we've got the work planes to define the position of our attachment here, and I'm just selecting the long axes, so for both sides, so this is the, if you like, the up and down. The short axis now is the horizontal in effect, which will be the intersecting part of each of the styles. So all we've got to do here is just select these horizontal styles. And once we've done that, and we only need to do it on the left hand side, we don't need to recreate that on the right hand side. We've already defined the right hand side at the same time. It just leaves us to define the front and back face of the actual style itself. So the front plane here so we pick that front face spin it round we're just going to zoom into the uh, to the back face and we can simply attach so we're using the multi attach mode here and it'll put 20 dominoes directly into our assembly in literally seconds so the great thing is obviously we can then remove the material that we need to accept to have a cavity for that joint so that domino will now remove that material for us so in order to do that and with any sculpting with woodwork for inventor you need to have the components switched on if they're not visible then it won't sculpt them so in actual fact there's a couple of ways you can work here you can use the browser as I'm using or you can use the um, woodwork for inventor visibility tools to switch on the components um, and here I'm just going to sculpt now and it will drill through so not only is it picking up on the dominoes that I placed but it'll pick up on any handle hinge shelf support that I've got in this assembly and obviously the mini fixes and it will remove the material as it as it sees fit if that's been defined and you can just see now as I zoom in we've got the domino slots that have been placed directly into the timber and you can just make out on the front face there the holes for the shelf supports as well. So that's a single shelf support that's placed, a little metal support, but it's placing a number, a set number of holes to go with that as well. Here's the uh, the hinge, and the hinge has already got uh, predefined pilot hole drillings as well. So try and make life as easy as possible to to pre-assemble this back into in, in a flat pack form. So just to prove that we added all of the dominoes in the right position. I'm just gonna switch the visibility off and you can just see on the opposite side here, we just zoom in, there you go. You can see we've got all the joints pre-positioned. And just for completeness, if I switch one of the visibility of components off, you can see straight away it's removed that. So the sculpt tool, I can add and subtract at any time, assuming that the hardware actually has, or the joint has that information assigned. To, to, to do that or well, very straightforward and, and, and easy so that really was just I guess um, an overview of, of the domino side of things we're then going to finish up on now adding material to make the final joint so the mortise and tenon is is the next option so this is where we have the sort of oak table if you like and we're going to use some pin joints you can see straight away we've We've done the basic design, everything's parametric as with all of the three assemblies that, that you're seeing today. You can change in the length width. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and we're gonna find the joint that I've 
pre pre assigned. But if we just have a look at it, we can just see literally we've got a couple of ex slotted extrusions here. We've got a couple of holes that we've cut through with some geometry, and we've just denoted, as you can see in the browser, the positives and the negatives for the mortise and tenon. We've also put a little corner block in there as well, and that's just to assist on the assembly constraint. So when we place this single joint in an assembly, we can then use the assembly tools to make sure everything's working um, as we'd, we'd uh, want to in, this, in the final assembly. So we've removed some degrees of freedom and we've named up some I-mates. And as you can see, we've got front, back, uh, left, right, and top. So all we need to do is just copy and paste that little assembly of that joint directly into uh, uh, the main assembly. However, the joint won't perform correctly unless you set it to flexible. The reason being that it's fixed when we placed it originally and it won't dynamically change. So you need to set it to flexible and then you can then assemble it, else it will fail to assemble. You need to select the front face, the right face and just follow the prompts really. You can do this in any order, so you can start on any corner and all it requires me to finish off on this bottom set is to define the top and I'm going to use the, the rail to, to do that. So it's now dropped in that mortise and tenon and it's already positioned. We need to do the opposite now, which is the top version to set for the top set of uh, rails. And we're just going to whiz round and put the back one in and the left final top will be on this top face here, just on right on the end of the vertical member there. We can now sculpt. just to show that we have the component. So the red component there is is uh, adding the clear ones, the ones actually going to subtract. So we're going to go and sculpt it. Just take a few moments just to go through that. So again, there's uh, four four legs to do a double, double job on. There we go. I'm just going to close that down. And straight away we can see it's put the whole information in there as well as the uh, joint as well. Excellent. So obviously it's done that not only in that vertical position, but it's done it in all vertical, all four in the, all four corners, because that's how we set the joint up. The tip here is just to remember if you want to parametrically change your assembly, just to unsculpt, just to remove the sculpt temporarily and then to re-sculpt when you've resized it. So today you've seen pretty much a quick overview of three sections on creating some joints and placing the joints uh, into the assemblies. I hope you found today interesting. Thanks for watching and please feel free to check back on my blog and have a great day. Thanks now. Cheers.